first story. Narcissistic Sil physically assaulted and spat on OP in front of her children's school for not attending their Super Bowl party at her home. I really need some help dealing with a tricky family situation. It has been building and came to a head last Friday. I really don't like to talk about money, but this issue centers on it, so there is no choice. I also feel I need to give some background for this to make enough sense to garner some solid advice. I'll give as much detail as I can while trying to keep it vague. There are a lot of people involved. I'm sorry it is so long. I grew up pretty solidly middle class, and my husband J48 grew up working poor. My father spent 20 years in the military, then 30 years with a union, and my mother was a psalm. Neither attended college. It was very important to my parents that both my brother and I attend college. My brother Mark 48 ended up attending a service academy, so there was no tuition. I ended up with enough scholarship money to make my own full ride at a private university. Our parents gifted us the money they would have put towards our tuition upon our respective graduations. My husband worked his butt off to get through undergrad, grad, and an MBA all while working full-time and sometimes supporting family members. He and I are coming up on our 18th wedding anniversary this summer. He is an executive, and I worked at a non-profit for five years before becoming a psalm. My life revolves around our four children, though I still find plenty of time for volunteer work. We are incredibly lucky. Live a very charmed life, and we don't take it for granted, at least I hope. My husband has a large family. His mother 66FD, one younger brother Tim 46F, and sister Lee 45F live in the same area as us, and we see them the most frequently among his relatives. My parents and my brother and his family live near us as well. We are all very close and spend a lot of time together including on vacation. My parents are retired. My brother spent 20 years in the military and then went into a second, well-paying career. His wife, Jess, 45, also retired from the military as a hospital administrator. Lee and her wife, Amy, 39, own a very successful salon day spa. Tim is a deputy sheriff. He is also a widower who remarried Emily, 44, F four years ago. And navigating her feelings is what I need help with. Emily came into our lives suddenly. It had been about 10 months since Tim's wife had passed away. She showed up at Lee's salon and said Tim sent her to get dolled up. A couple weeks after that, Tim started bringing her to family events. I felt bad for Emily. No one liked her, and it was palpable. Five weeks later, she announced she was pregnant at Tim's daughter's first communion. In front of his deceased wife's parents, she told everyone she was on the pill, and it must have failed. No one really believed her. Tim married her two weeks later in Las Vegas. When they opened our gift, Tim flipped out with happiness, and her face fell. She looked incredulous, and said she thought we would get them a house. We had given them a trip to Hawaii for their honeymoon, and since Vegas was going to serve as their honeymoon too, we thought this would be a nice treat. We would be caring for our nieces, and even offered to take Emily's children or hire childcare. My husband said, rather calmly, to his credit, that the trip could be used towards a down payment instead. She clicked her tongue and said, what a nice gift a mortgage, and no honeymoon welcome to the family. She was positively glaring at me. Before anyone could say anything else, my husband took my hand, and we left. Later, when they got back from Hawaii, she apologized, saying that since we had bought townhomes for both our parents, she assumed we'd gift them a house too. For our children, and you know, so they can all be near the family in a nice, safe, gated community. She has five children. Tim has three. And then they have one together. It's been a passive-aggressive spiral since then and she seems to target me the most. Look, we have money. I have expensive bags and shoes, and all those totally unnecessary, but fantastic things wealthy housewives can collect. Every time it says, oh, a Chanel bag must be nice, but I'd rather my children have nice clothes. Or she'll put her foot up next to my foot and say, 8,000 or 1995, I can't tell the difference, can any of you? And she'll laugh and laugh, like it's an inside joke. BTW, I do not own $8,000 shoes. The other women in my family have the same or similar price things. Mine seem to anger Emily the most. Hosting holidays and celebrations rotates between myself, Jess and Lee. Thanksgiving is my holiday. For the past four years, she has done something to mess it up. In year one, she accidentally broke a crystal punch bowl that had been a gift to my great-grandmother on her wedding day. I was devastated, but I was a gracious hostess and actually believed it was an accident. Later, my cousin said the only way it could have broken the way it had was for someone to pick it up and drop it straight down. It was full of red drinks and made a mess, ruining some linens too. In year two, our powder room overflowed. She admitted she had done that as a fun family prank that had gone wrong. We always prank each other, we do not. Year three, 
My gravy was so salty, it was inedible. I'm blaming it on her. She kept asking, Oh, where is your giblet gravy? I just love your gravy, and on and on. This past year was the worst. Amy pulled me aside and showed me a bottle of Ipecac. She said she saw Emily pull it out of her purse, then pop it in real quick again when Amy walked in. Amy took it after Emily walked out. I was so panicked. She might have used it already, but it was sealed. Amy and I decided not to say anything right then. Later, Emily came out from where the coats and purses were looking flush, and she kept looking at Amy and looking away. I told my husband later that night, and he was furious and called his brother. They had a terrible fight, and they have barely spoken since. I know this is so long, but there is one more thing that happened that really put this over the top. My brother and Jess host a Super Bowl Sunday party. They go all out. My brother not only invites our family, his friends and co-workers, but also work friends of just about everyone in our family. Emily decided she wanted to host the Super Bowl. She sent out invites to everyone in the family. Everyone said they would be attending Jess and Mark's party. She sent out reminders stating that it was time for someone else to be allowed to host an event, and that this year was their year to host the Super Bowl. This was the fair thing to do, and she expected everyone there to have a snack at 3 p.m. Bye up. Needless to say, no one showed. About an hour into the game, Tim even showed up at my house to watch the game. I kept expecting angry calls and texts, yet I heard nothing. The following Friday, it all blew up. My children attend parochial school, and I am a room mom, so I attend Mass on Fridays with them. While this is technically a public weekday Mass, it is held in a church attached to a school, so all of the children are there. I was standing in the side aisle helping my class when she walked up, grabbed my arm, and said we needed to talk. Everyone turned their heads as she didn't bother to keep her voice down. Luckily, we were near a side door, and we got outside before she blew up. She started screaming at me about how I had ruined her life. My jealousy of her kept her from becoming a part of the family. I was just a pretty mean girl that never left my sorority, but sooner or later, my arse would fall and my face would rot. How she was sorry that her hot dogs and chips weren't good enough for me, and I just couldn't miss out on my Super Bowl porterhouse. It was then that one of our deacons walked out, and I wished I could have evaporated. How ridiculous. He told us they could hear us inside. I started to apologize, and she screamed, I don't effing care, pedophile. I told her I was done, and to not come to my children's school ever again. Our deacon was already pulling out his cell phone. He told her to leave, or he'd call the police. She yelled at him. Her husband was, the police, but she guessed he only cared about women who married walking wallets like I did. He started to laugh. I don't blame him, it was so absurd. I tried not to, but I giggled too. I looked at her, shaking my head and said, Emily, she slapped me across the face, spit at me, and walked away. I've never been so shocked. I've never been hit in my life. She left a bruise on my arm, which she held onto. She also keyed my car all up. Everyone wanted to call the police, but I asked them not to. Please let us handle this family situation. I was so embarrassed. My husband is furious. His brother came over and apologized to us both profusely. He said he would pay for my car. I wouldn't hear of it, though my husband looked tempted. The whole family knows and has taken my side which I think makes it worse. However, I am grateful for the sentiment. The whole parish knows, it was comforting Sunday to hear story after story of crazy in-laws, but I want to fix this. How? How do I fix this with her? TLDR. Sill is upset at the wealth gap in our family, and it's making every gathering and everyone extremely uncomfortable. I want to fix this. How? Update. I want to thank everyone for all of their kind comments and advice. It has been a very stressful day. And while this saga is not over, I do want to update you all. Again, thank you. It means so much to me the way you have helped. Just listening was enough, and you all went above and beyond. I'm going to try to keep this short, and to the point. The other post was so long, and I actually edited out three stories that made that first part make sense. But it was very cathartic for me. The day started with a family meeting at my husband's office. His mom, brother, sister, and my brother. Tim, honestly, was relieved. He said he'd been ready to divorce her since the Thanksgiving incident, but he said he was so embarrassed for what he had gotten himself and his three girls into. His girls are seven, nine, twelve. My husband, his brother, and my brother were on one end of the spectrum. Wanted full prosecution, etc. Amy and I were the others. Let's just cut her out. Everyone else was in between. Finally, we decided we would file a police report and get restraining orders. Get a few more cameras for home. 
Tim would file for divorce and custody of their shared daughter Diane. They would stay with us for a while, and then the plan was for all of them to move to a new home with Tim's mom. We all split up, and my husband and I went to our attorney. Then to our church, with plans to go to the police station after. When the administrator at our DOCs found out vandalism, an assault had taken place on church property and authorities had not been called, he was furious, so the authorities were called. The long story is a bit shorter. Report filed. Temporary protective orders. Long day. All good. Not so fast. Tim had gone home to get the girls' things and to arrange a personal leave. Emily was there. She knew something was up, and I guess it was pretty ugly. She said a lot of horrible things about Beth and Beth's children, apparently. Broke a lot of things and took off after saying he could have his divorce and get this his whole crazy family. Seriously, I could laugh over this if it wasn't so heartbreaking. Tim went to pull the girls from school, but when he got back, his German shepherd was gone. My brother's wife had my children for the afternoon. My husband, brother, and I are just leaving our attorney for the second time, and we get a call from our community security that there has been some vandalism. My heart sank. We get home. My bare root roses are torn up, and there are feces smeared all over our door. I didn't go into what was keyed into my car, but she had keyed C, F for you, yes, F for you, Beaner, and wet back into it, and what looked like a penis. Now I'm of Cuban heritage, so the word she was looking for was Balsero, but it was a close enough insult. She wrote C, Beaner, and J F'd me in her feces on my porch. I will say that it was at this point that I stopped worrying about her feelings. The police were called. My brother Mark called two of his out-of-work vet buddies, who are now employed as our security for the foreseeable future. Now we find out from Tim that Jax the doggy is missing. Emily calls him, and says she will end herself and Jax, if he doesn't bring Diane to her. Tim went to meet her with the police. Jax has broken ribs and a broken leg, but he also bit her up pretty badly. Apparently, she just started sobbing when they took her into custody. So we all end up at Lee and Amy's house, and this is so heartbreaking. Karen, Tim's 12-year-old, broke down and said she was so happy Emily was gone. She admitted that Emily would spank her and her sisters and say mean things about their fat, frumpy mother. And they should be grateful God gave them such a cool, pretty stepmom. After all the children got to bed, Amy told us all she was a target for Emily too. That's why she was suspicious of her. Emily was incredulous that Amy could be a lesbian and look so feminine. So she would always point out men, make crude statements, and even make dating profiles for her and try to set her up on dates. She once held her against the wall and kissed her. And when Amy pushed her away she said, See, I knew you weren't a dyke. As for Emily's children, they are 16, 15, second husband, 11, 9, boyfriend and 7, fourth husband. 16, 15 and 7 are with their fathers. 11 and 9 are with child welfare. Tim wants to get custody of them. Their father has not been in the picture for a very long time. There is a lot more detail, but I'm just mentally and emotionally exhausted. We are taking all the children away for the weekend. Therapy for everyone. I'm just hoping we can get this all resolved as smoothly as possible. This is hands down the most insane, most traumatic, and honestly most awful thing I have ever gone through, and it's still ongoing. I'm grateful I've been able to talk about it here, and I hope I can keep updating because it is really helpful to me to hear outside perspectives. TLDR. Emily is on hold and treat. Tim and his children are staying with us for a while. Amy was being tormented as well. There were temporary protective orders issued all around. There are two pretty bad things that happen here. You may want to brace yourself if one involves a pet and the other involves feces. Additional information from the comments. Hi. This might be a little upsetting for animal lovers. I can barely think about it without getting pretty worked up. Jax is getting up to senior. He is eight. I don't know every detail of what happened when she was taken into custody, but she hit Jax in the head with a car jack custody. This just caused a gash that needed some stitches, and when he started biting, she started beating on his body, probably more so to get him off her. Now is Tim, and then the police rushed her. Tim did say Jax jumped out of the SUV, and he thinks that may have been when he broke his leg. It's not a bad break, but he will need some physical therapy because shepherds can have hip issues, especially as they age. Also, I edited out a couple of things from my first post because it had gotten so long. She became enraged that my brother offered to help her oldest son through the steps to get a nomination to a service academy. He had mentioned joining the military. She just expected all her children to get college funds and said some hurtful things like, oh well, that will cost you nothing, and it doesn't matter if my son gets killed. 
but your golden child referring to my oldest will be going to Harvard. Also, I am pretty embarrassed by this, and I'm hoping it gets buried. But since I edited it out before, and in the spirit of full disclosure, she borrowed from me all the time. Also Amy and some from Jess and Tim's mom D. Shoes, purses, clothing and jewelry. I let her. I am a pushover who felt sorry for her, and yes, guilt at my own good fortune. Well she came to find out she'd been selling most of it, and then buying what she wanted. Her excuse was that I could buy more. Yay, that's Emily. And yes, I do feel like a bit of an idiot. Second story. OP's son confessed to cheating on his pregnant wife. Now OP resents him, and doesn't know how to tell her. Hello all, I'm fairly new to posting on Reddit, and I'm on mobile, so please forgive any mistakes. My son 28M has been married to his high school sweetheart Olivia 26F fake name for five years now. Two weeks ago, it was my son's birthday. He went out of state with some of his community college friends to spend time at a resort. Olivia had chosen to stay in state, as she is heavily pregnant with twins and high risk seven months. I told my son to cancel the trip and stay with his wife, but she insisted they go have fun. So I insisted she stay with me so she could stay in bed, and she accepted with some pushing. Now I love Olivia. She is sweet, respectful, and like a daughter to me. Her own parents were not great. So we bonded easily as she dated my son. We talk daily and see each other often. After my son got home from his trip, I could tell something was off. He wouldn't accept any drinks I offered him, refused to kiss Olivia instead of giving awkward hugs, and was overall incredibly cautious. I asked him over and over why he's acting so strange, but he beat around my questions and went home with Olivia. Throughout the following week, Olivia would tell me more about my son's odd behavior. He moved into the guest bedroom, refused to eat any of her meals, refused any kind of intimacy, etc. Whenever I spoke to my son about it, I got one-word answers, or he would ignore the topic completely. This week, he came to my home in tears, clutching a folder filled with visibly crumpled papers. After calming him down, he told me that on his birthday trip, his college friends hooked him up with multiple workers. He never used protection with any of them and didn't think anything of it until he started burning. Apparently, he contracted 2 STIs gonorrhea and HPV. I was blunt in explaining why he was telling me and not his wife, who is pregnant with twins. That's when he begged me not to tell her about his affairs and to let him stay with me while he treated his infections. I flat out told him no, and that if he wasn't going to tell his wife, I would. He then got angry, shouting and crying, saying how I'm going to rip his family apart before it's even started, because I refuse to let him have any fun. He accused me of favoring Olivia and wanting to separate him from his children, as I did for his own father. This was not true, and is another story. I had to call on my neighbor, whom I am close with, to help escort my son out of my home. Edit. I did find the papers he brought, and they were not medical results but instead bank statements. I'm thinking about how this will hurt Olivia, and possibly her twins by telling her. And maybe my son is right. So please help me find a way to do this with minimal damage to my dear family. In the comments. She is seven and a half months old, along with her twins. She struggled with infertility and had multiple miscarriages before successfully carrying her twins. She's high risk and was recommended bedrest until labor after hitting six months. I have permission from Olivia to share this. I absolutely plan to tell her. But I just don't know how. She loves my son dearly, and she has no immediate family by her side, as she had no contact with them after she got engaged to him seven years ago. I don't want to put Olivia or the babies in harm's way by telling her and causing her so much pain, but I can't let my son recklessly harm them with his mistakes either. I have no idea why he decided to confide in me. Maybe he thought I would protect him from his consequences which I admit I had foolishly done a few times in the past when he would get into trouble. But he was a child then, and in all honesty, I wasn't that much of an adult either. I know he's not telling me the whole truth about something. I just don't know what or how to find out. I would usually say, I wish I wasn't, as I try to stay out of my children's relationships. But I'm glad I am involved in this. As hard as it is, I don't want my son to get away with this. Nor do I want him to accidentally ruin not only his life but Olivia's and the twins. I'm praying that no pregnancies resulted from his foolishness, and even if paternity is uncertain, I wouldn't wish for any children to grow up not knowing their parents like I did. The bank statements he left here are all from months ago. I'm not sure what they're for. He left with everything else he brought, so I don't think I'll know for a while, as he's not speaking to me. He was sober when he came to pick up Olivia, at least I hope, and I didn't offer him alcohol because I knew he would be driving with Olivia in the car. I'm really not too concerned with his sporadic behavior. 
as I'm having Oliva stay with me until things settle. I will be having the talk with Olivia. I've already requested she stay with me until she goes into labor, which she agreed to because of my son's distance, and because she likes my bathtub more than the one in her apartment. She's such a sweet soul. I hate the idea of breaking her heart like this. I still love my son, but this entire situation has changed how I see him. I don't know what that says about me. I've told her I'm making a double rainbow baby post to my Facebook, which I am, as she's been there for six months and is ready to make her announcement public for extended family. She wanted to wait until she was sure she'd carry to term, as she lost her previous baby at four months. I will try to convince her to get tested at her next appointment, after I have spoken to her about the situation. I don't know how I'd feel towards my own son, knowing he was doing this for so long, infected his wife and possibly children, and still doesn't want to come clean. It breaks my heart. In the end, I want them both to be happy and safe. I took Olivia in when her mother kicked her out at 18. I was with her through every lost child, and I mothered my son at only 15 years old. I'm not saying any of these things make me entitled to their lives. I really don't know what I'm saying at this point. I just want them happy and my grandkids safe and loved. That's all I've wanted for them. I just wish I could fix this. I am very embarrassed. I thought I raised him to be better. Mini update. Hi all. I've read through all of your comments. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to respond to them all. This situation is just so hard. In one of my comment replies, I'd said Olivia would be with me until labor, and another for the weekend. She was going to stay for the last couple of months, but my son convinced her he'd take care of her. Well, Olivia is here, and she did want to talk about my son's behavior. As many guessed, she does think something is going on and confronted my son about it. He did not take the accusations well, and a fight ensued. Things got heated before I arrived to pick up Olivia, and when she got in my car, I could see her arm had a large hand mark on it. She was hysterical, and it broke my heart to see her cry so hard. All I could do was pull over to a parking lot and hold her as she sobbed in my car. She told me that she was sure he cheated again. Yes again. Apparently, he cheated on her multiple times in the past. First, when they first began dating, she forgave him, and he promised he'd never do it again. He then again cheated with one of her maids during his bachelor party. I asked why she never told anyone or left him. She said, I didn't want to lose my mom and my husband at the same time. That effing broke me. I felt like I'd failed her. I didn't protect her or notice how he was hurting her. I saw them as a picture-perfect couple, high school sweethearts with a set of twins to match my own. I just held her and told her how sorry I was for being so blind. All she did was sob. I can still hear it echoing in my head. I got her some of her favorite fast food on the way and drew her a bath where she is now. I can hear her sniffling and quietly sobbing in the bathroom. I feel so lost. My son has blocked my number since I took Olivia with me. And honestly, I think it was a smart move because I can't trust what I would say if I could speak to him. I've never felt like this before. I don't know what I'm feeling towards my son. But I can't call it love, patience or care like I've always had. And that breaks me. I feel like my little family is crumbling. And I can't hold it together. I won't be telling Olivia the news tonight. In a way, I think she already knows. Thank you all for your kind advice. More in the comments. Unfortunately, I can't say my pregnancy with my triplets was outside of this range of terrible pregnancies. I had gotten pregnant at 15 with a man who was 26 at the time. My parents kicked me out, and he was all I had left, being pregnant and a teen. He was verbally and physically abusive towards me for my entire pregnancy, and even some years after, which was especially hard as I had lost my third baby and almost my life giving birth. I was riddled with PPD and was in constant pain from the healing, as I had been torn during labor. Luckily, I was able to make my escape, and I've raised my two children on my own. I love my children, and while I don't appreciate my son being so out of control, he's still my son, and I'll always love him as a mother. Parenting can be a gift, a curse, or a Pandora's box where you'll never know or even understand what you've got. I wouldn't trade my children for the world, and if I had to, I'd go through it all again to be a mother to my daughter, son, and Olivia. I've never been supportive of those friends of his. He never makes a good choice when around them and I've had to bail him out more than once because of him. He's always been an intelligent, kind, and intelligent child. He was an honor student, and he got several scholarships, but chose to drop them to go to college with Olivia. While at the time I didn't approve, I always thought it showed how much he truly loved Olivia. It hurts to think about these things, given my situation. I don't want to think ill of my son, but his actions hurt me and my family. I was with my abuser for three years after I had given birth. 
We were not in a relationship before I got pregnant. He was the son of a close friend of my mother's, with whom she'd had a six-year affair a couple years before I was born. Paternity proved I am my father's though. That didn't stop him from leaving after knowing about the affairs. My mother would often push me onto him whenever his father was around, and he'd use that opportunity, I guess. I don't like thinking about this. He never put his hands on my children, only me, as I was the only woman in the house at that point, as it was before my daughter my son's twin transitioned. I thought that since he never hurt them, and was never aggressive with them, they wouldn't develop these tendencies. I hate to think I was wrong. I know my son is better than him. I just don't know what happened. Second update. Hello again, and hopefully for the last time. It is 3 a.m., and this is long, so please bear with me. The most overwhelming response was that I needed to tell Olivia, and all the risks of not telling her. Well, she's been told. The other the night after her bath, she sat me down and begged me to tell her all I knew. She swore she could handle it, but knowing I knew something she didn't know about her marriage was eating her up. But I told her that it was going to break her heart to know, and I suggested that she wait until she's had time to relax and take some of the stress off herself and the babies. She insisted she wanted to know everything, so I told her all the information in my original post. She took it just about as well as you might think. My fears were quelled as they hadn't been intimate besides things such as kissing for three months, and Olivia didn't want to risk anything. I just held her as she cried. She kept repeating how she couldn't lose her family again, and it just tore my heart to pieces again. I reassured her, babies or no babies, marriage or no marriage, she was my daughter, and I wouldn't leave her for anything. She ended up getting in contact with my son later that night, and all night, I could hear her sobbing through my bedroom wall. I'd been thinking all night about how everyone has been talking about my son. He's a monster, and just like his father, it genuinely hurt my soul that some part of me agreed. Yesterday morning, Olivia convinced my son to come for breakfast. My son agreed to come over and talk, and with the agreement, he'd come clean about everything with as much evidence as he could find. This was a mistake, as many comments suggested keeping her away from him, and I really should have listened. At breakfast, he was, of course, asked to share the truth, and the whole truth up front, if he wanted any chance to see his children. So, the truth. He never hooked up with multiple hookers. The resort they were staying at was in the same city as his girlfriend. The trip was not a week-long one, as he claimed. He was only with his friends that weekend. After that, everyone but him went back home. He spent the rest of his time away with his girlfriend, whom he had been seeing for the past six months. She was pregnant and threatening to expose him if he didn't step up for their baby, so he ran to me with a fake story of getting infected, so I'd house him while he hid from his wife and girlfriend. The bank statements he left behind were all the expenses he'd spent on her and her baby from a previous relationship that he was keeping from Olivia. He had evidence to prove all his claims true, from plain ticket dates to text messages to pictures of them on her social media. Olivia had no emotion through it all. She just sat there with tears streaming down her face. Olivia hasn't been able to work since getting pregnant and was using her money instead of their joint account to make it easier for my son to take care of them both. He was trying to wipe the statements before Olivia could put two and two together, as she has experience in accounting and helps with managing their finances. The thing that broke me is that my son had been in contact with his father for the last two years, and I had no idea. His father knows where I am about Olivia and the babies, the other woman and her children, about my daughter's transition all of it because of my son. He found my son on Facebook, and they've been in almost frequent contact since. His excuse. I speak to Olivia daily, and if she can have a parent to talk to, so should he. To say a fight ensued would be an understatement. Olivia lost her temper completely and put her hands on my son before I could stop her. He pushed her off, and she fell onto my glass coffee table. My son ran before my neighbor came over due to the commotion, and I took Olivia to the hospital for her injuries. She is staying overnight in the hospital to be monitored as her blood pressure was too high for her to be released the same day. I still haven't had any contact with my son since he left, and my heart is in shambles. Olivia refused to speak with the police and has refused to press charges. So, I'm still waiting on my daughter's availability to explore Olivia's legal options on divorce, custody, and possibly a protective order. My daughter's wife has agreed to speak with Olivia when she's ready, as she is a licensed trauma therapist. I don't think I'll be coming back to this account. I'm going to be devoting my time to my family and hopefully, I will be able to salvage what is left. I realize how invasive this entire post situation is, and I will be showing Olivia my posts and comments when she is better. Thank you for the advice and kind words. Note. I will not be answering any more questions about my ex, 
my childbirth experience, my childhood etc. All of those questions are very invasive, and the memories are incredibly painful, and I've gone a decade or so without thinking about any of the terrible crap from my youth. I've shared all I'm willing to share in my previous comments. You don't have to believe it because I lived it and know it to be true. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.